worship you, Lord. Shinda la mandere le me soro. Eria sinya la nda mandore. Endere oh. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We The praise, hallelujah. Praise, hallelujah. Praise, hallelujah. hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Eh, shobod ne tekeri ashanda bese teri ashtonda la se teri ashto mononde. Nunde ashobod ya steke te se te bo se bde omboti asa. Nunde ashobod seke. Mi ashte kabo ne ne amas se bde aso todo se. For I am a God of great victories. Amen. And this morning I give you the victory. Yes. I say unto you, stand with me. Stand steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Your labor will be not vain. And I'll bless you and prosper you above and exceedingly above all that you can even ask or even think. Hallelujah. 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 Uh-huh. Yes. We are the army. We are the army of God, the army, the army, the forces that go, that go and clean up. Because it's, we, are, we are the army. The devil is defeated because you know what? Because we are the army. We have the name of Jesus. We have our Lord. We have our Lord. We have the name. Isha. For this is the great time of the army of the Lord rising in the land. You are the army, and the enemy has been defeated because my blood and my army can go forth holding forth the covenant of God and the name of Jesus Christ, my army raising up a standard in the, in the land, my special forces unit raising up a standard in the land, going here and going there and dispatching darkness and bringing light and bringing more light, and more light, and more light, so more people will raise their hands and rejoice. So this morning, go ahead and raise your hands and rejoice. Hallelujah! All right. Turn to someone and say, I'm glad I came this morning, I think. Uh. Well, welcome to um, our Episcopalian service. Glad you could come this morning. Sturgeon Bay probably having great moves of God all over Sturgeon Bay this morning. We certainly are believing for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and so some of these things come with the territory, and we're thankful that you could come and be with us today. Everybody say amen. amen. And uh, I had my place marked here for the offering, but uh, then I lost my place. Where is that scripture on the, the uh, where Jesus, uh, oh here it is, okay, well that's good. I just went over there. Let's see here. Is that where it is? Okay, let's go to, look over here at Matthew chapter 14. How many are hot like me? No, seriously, I'm serious. Are you hot? I'm burning up. I'm trying to get enough of them. We won, turn it down. I don't know what's wrong with her. Eskimo. It's hot up here. I don't know. I think when Stella dances, it gets hot. You know? <laughs> Matthew 
Now, verse 14 of Matthew chapter 14 says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, that, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that uh, they may go into the villages and go to Taco Bell while it's still open. <laughs> verse 16, But Jesus said, Don't go to Taco Bell, that's not good for you. You give them what they really need to eat. <laughs> Verse 17, And they said unto him, We have here four, five loaves and two fishes. Now, fish is good for you. Everybody say amen. amen. And he said, Bring them up to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and to the multitude. And they all did eat and were filled. And they took up their fragments that remained twelve baskets full and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. So you're looking at 15,000 people probably at least. And he fed them with just a few loaves and fishes. This is God's mighty power. And when it comes to offering time, you need to understand God can do the same thing for us. Maybe things look difficult and challenging when you go down and fill up your tank or when you go to the grocery store or whatever it is because we see all this inflation and everything. But they don't counter in the fact, you know, that I believe there's a plot to try to overthrow us and all that. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but the older I get, the more the conspiracies come to pass. <laughs> but I believe something's going on where there's all this evil and these uh, weird devices and all this kind of stuff going up against us. But what they never figure in is the God factor. They never figure in the God factor. And the God factor is, it don't matter how high the prices go, if God has to divide our money and give us more money and bring in money and, and this and that, or put more uh, gas in your tank, maybe give you half a free gas, who knows, multiply your gas, whatever it is, God will do it. So we don't shrink back and say, I'm going to give anymore because I'm on a budget. Get off your budget, baby. This is the way you do it. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. Stella, go out. She go, I'm going shopping. I go, yeah, okay, I'll see you in about three hours. I'm going to garage sale. She goes, she goes about uh, four hours later. Yeah, she comes back in. She's got all these bags. She says, I spent $17.72. Then she starts whipping out all the stuff that she got. She went over there and she got sweaters for me that are like $150 each. Brand new sweaters and clothes. This just happens all the time. You add it all up and it's like five, six hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. And it's not cheap stuff, it's the best stuff. She don't go to the cheap things. She stays away from downtown Sturgeon Bay. No, that's not, that's not very bad. Um, what could I use as an example around here? Well, never mind. But she goes to like Luxembourg and places. She knows exactly where we're going. In fact, she has, she has ladies that call her on the phone, say, come on over, we got stuff, before anybody else can go, because she has favor with them. So she gets a pick of the litter. So we don't spend money on clothes much, you know. This, these clothes come in, and she gets a dress. And, you know, <clears throat> we were out the other day. I think she, I don't know how many garments she got for the new little boy coming pretty soon here. Yeah, she's loading up on that deal. And so that's the way God is. And if you're, if you're in the kingdom of God, you need to start trusting him to do this multiplying of miracles. Hallelujah. So as we receive our tithes and offerings this morning, let's, let's for a moment really think about who we're serving. A God who does nothing takes him by uh, surprise, right? You ever, you ever went through something? We went through some really... Difficult challenges. How many have ever had your sewer back up? Oh, wow. We had that Wednesday, what do they call it, septic tank? Uh, Tuesday morning, about like four in the morning, I get up to the restroom, which is my custom now. And I, I go, what's that smell and what's that sound? And I go and open the door and it's all backed up in there. We've had that happen before. So we had to bail it all out, you know, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, we had to call Brother Tim, tried to come help us, and he for whatever reason, his rotor router didn't go that far. And we had another guy come and he charged me $430 for 15 minutes. That didn't work. 
So I finally called, I prayed about it, and I said, who should we call? And this guy, uh, I don't know who I asked. I think it was, was it Scott? No. Yeah, I talked to the septic tank guy who was pumping our septic tank, too, at the same time. All this is going on. And I said, who should I have come do this? And he says, well, there's a guy here and a guy there. But uh, I never used any of them. I, I used another guy from Sturgeon Bay. And he came down. It took him 15 minutes to unplug that sucker. But while that was going on, my mind was thinking, what if I have to have a new septic tank? You know how much that costs? You don't want to know. And so your mind goes through all this stuff while you're going through this. But all you need to know is just keep praising him, keep watching God, looking at God, because he didn't, didn't take it by surprise. A little grease in the tank. Everybody say amen. I'm, am I'm amazed at what's in those tanks. I, I opened up that tank the other day, and I thought, I don't want this job. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So anyway, that was a, a little test. But how many know, praise God, we can trust God? Just trust Him in everything. Trust Him in everything. Now, we're gonna. If you if you want to give an offering, you're out on the the uh, internet. You can you can go to our a little link down there, and it goes uh, goes over to my, our page, um, faith alive fellowship dot org, and you can go to PayPal. You can send it in. We appreciate all of our partners, and we really appreciate the fact that they do support us very well. We appreciate that in Jesus' name. For us, we raise our hands now, and the ushers will serve you very quickly because we don't need to take a long time at this. If you need an envelope for your giving, please raise your hands quickly. If you're making out your checks, speed up the writing. If you need help with spelling or, num or uh, zeros, come see me. You guys are kind of calm today. Yeah. Here, let me do this over here. Thank you. Uh, I've got a lot of scriptures that we're going to have to read today, so I'm going to have Sister Melissa help me. And uh, we might have to tag team in the back a little bit because I don't want to wear out any of my staff people with too much. So uh, I might call upon you to go back there. <sighs> you have a testimony? How long is it going to be? One minute. Okay, up. I'm starting right now. One, two, three. I can tell you that God is so good. He is so good. When Pastor Tom is talking about uh, don't worry, he provides. <coughs> he did provide everything that we need on the cross. And when you just put your trust in him, he makes everything, he, he provides everything. Well, he provided me this week with a full tank of gas. Praise God. And with that full tank of gas, a beautiful car that oh. somebody gave me. Wow. With 50,000 miles on it. That's awesome. God is so good. You never know what's going to come around the corner. That's right. You don't have to worry about anything. So praise God. Thank you for that. Yes, you know what? Jennifer Burns, she's a giver. Nothing seems to ever, you know, surprise me about her. Stretch forth your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we, we prevent unto you, uh, present unto you these wonderful gifts today that come out of our lives. and We love to worship you with our tithes and offerings, so Lord, we just present them to you and ask you to break them just like you did the loaves and fishes and help souls coming in. And Father, we just claim every single promise concerning giving to go in effect right now for God's people. And everybody said amen. amen. Well, thank you all for that. Also... I want to say that we do have, we have any announcements other than this deliverance? Where is that deliverance deal? I had one right here. Oh, here it is. Uh, deliverance and healing meeting, June 26th at 1 p.m. We are getting some response, not as much as we did last uh, time, but we'll see. So if you uh, uh, know somebody that needs healing and, and deliverance, young people especially, they need deliverance. Yeah. Almost everybody that comes into this church that's under uh, 30 years old needs deliverance now. 
I'm serious. And got got like really quiet in here. And it's not just that that uh, age either. But healing and deliverance service will be there. We'll we'll have the regular service in the morning. We'll come back at one o'clock, and uh, so that's that's for your benefit. That is June the twenty sixth at one p.m. Please come to the early service. I'll probably do some ministering there as we did today. And then we'll just lead right in over into the next service. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have Melissa come up and lead us in communion real quick. And then I'll get into the message. All right. So what Pastor Tom is having us do basically is communion with a purpose. Amen. Today, um, I'll just encourage us of leading off of what the offering message was that this is a remembrance of the covenant we have with God that everything is taken care of amen so let's take this today we'll declare some things and then take communion about him providing for everything that we need right now um we have to resist fear you have to fix your mind it says in the bible that he who has, his, I'm going to have to paraphrase it if I don't remember it right. He is in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. So we could, we could pray for peace and say, God, give me peace. But it's when we service. fix our minds on this word, when we set our mind on it. We have each other to remind one another and to help each other. But that's how we have our peace. And he is our perfect peace. And this seals that. Amen. So let's just declare some things. Um, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. Um, we declare... We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're overcomers. We have everything we need. We have all the fuel we need. We have all the food we need. I have enough to share with others. Enough to share with others. I have enough to give to others. I have enough to give to others. And all my needs are taken care of. And all my needs are taken care of. Thank you. According Lord. to his riches. According to his riches. In glory. In glory. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's take the bread. Jesus' body was broken for us so we could be whole. Glory to God. Anything you need, any wholeness you need, let's receive that right now. Thank you, Lord. Now the blood is what sealed it. What we needed to be saved from hell, to have the power of darkness broken, was blood from the worthy lamb. Hallelujah. Jesus is a worthy lamb. And we're, let's remember that right now. Receive that power. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a wonder-working power in that blood. Thank you, Lord. Yep. I ain't going to do it. I'm already tired. <laughs> How many came here to receive this morning? Yes. I was yes. kind of waiting on somebody that was supposed to be here this morning that didn't show up. So we're going to go forward because we have to. Amen. Sometimes that happens. Spiritual warfare this morning. Turn to Mark chapter 9. I'm going to talk to you again about prayer. There's different kinds of prayer, many different kinds of prayer. Today I want to talk about the Christian F word a little bit. Everybody say fasting. fasting. <laughs> What's fasting for? What's that all about? And how come, how come, right? Does fasting really change God? No. Do you change God somehow? No. Do you change his opinion because you fast long enough? That, uh, the answer to that is no, okay? No. Secondarily, how many know you don't change, really change the devil no. by fasting? No. Guess who changes when you fast? Me. Yeah, you got that right. So this is going to be interesting. Some of you have never probably seen this because... I had never seen it before, and I, you know, I was listening to Brother Hagen on the way in here, and the Lord really, I mean, that guy, uh, there's something about that guy that just, you know, I just, I just get stirred up. So we're going to read uh, first, uh, Melissa, Mark 9, 1 through 29. This, is, this reminds me of a crusade right. here I'm doing, see. Thanks for the large print. Yes. Okay. All right. And he said unto them, verily I say unto you, that, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. 
And after six days, Jesus takes with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. Interesting wording. And there appeared unto them Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. Sorry, where did it go? And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elijah must come first come? And he answered and told them, Elijah verily comes first and restores all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elijah is indeed come, and they have indeed un- <clears throat> they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with, what question ye with them? One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. Hang on for a second. All right. He brought to the disciples his son, who had a dumb spirit. Okay, keep going. And wheresoever he takes him, he tears, teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. Everybody say, pineth away. Pineth away. (laughs) What does that mean? I don't know. Keep reading. And I spake to thy disciples (laughs) that they should cast him out, and they could not. What? That they should cast him out, and they could not. They they what? Couldn't. They couldn't. couldn't. Okay, keep reading. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Isn't that funny? (laughs) You'd expect Jesus, you know. Well, you guys, you know, you're you're learning and just wait and you know, give it your best shot and you know, I'm proud of you and pat him on the head. <laughs> Back up and read a little bit. This is what he said. He answered him them and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. You know what that means? <laughs> I don't want to be with you anymore. <laughs> I don't want to hang around with you anymore. I don't even want to go to Taco Bell with Let you me guys. Do it. Okay, keep going. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Wallowed foaming. Wallowed foaming. Love the King James. Keep uh-huh. going. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, a, a child. And oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Stop there, please. Everybody say, help Help. our unbelief. unbelief. Okay, keep going. We're going to help your unbelief this morning. All right. Let me show you how. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we do it? I paraphrase. Why could we not cast him out? Mm-hmm. And he said unto them, This kind can, can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Okay, good. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Aren't you glad Melissa's reading this and not me? <laughs> I, I am. Okay, uh, let's go to um, <coughs> Matthew chapter 17. Mm-hmm. And we're going to read uh, verse 
verses 1 through 21 in just a second. Okay. I was watching a video, I think it sent it over to our group, and you know, I think Bill Winston or something was preaching that it's Nancy DeFrayed on leadership, and he had a really good thing. He said this young man, come up and help me read. Remember, you see that? So he, this young man was helping him read, and at the end of it, he gave him $200 for his, you know. I saw the one where he gave him 100 he gave him, he gave him more. He gave him two of them. <laughs> <laughs> See, but you never know. You never know what may happen. Point is, he's getting older. He didn't want to read. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. <clears throat> and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. <clears throat> and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. <clears throat> and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Hang on one second. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the fever in Jay. I command it to come out of him in Jesus' name. Come out of him in Jesus' name. Leave him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You may continue. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. And oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. Well, hang on for a second. This guy's got a lot of issues. Yep. Lunatic, sore vexed, epilepsy, dumb, death. Keep reading. Yeah. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. They could not what? Cure him. Okay, keep reading. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Because of what? Your unbelief. Okay, keep reading. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goes not out by prayer and fasting. All right, so we have two of these witnesses that say, you know, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. It's because of your unbelief and so on. So let's go to one more, Luke chapter 9. Uh, verse 28 through 50. <laughs> <clears throat> and it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, 
much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit takes him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. Wow. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. They what? They could not. Oh, okay. Keep going. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse <laughs> generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a, was yet a coming, a devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the power, mighty power of God. But while they wondered, everyone, at all these things which Jesus did, he said on his, unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the hands of men. But they understood not, what, not this saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. Then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them... Yeah, stop there. Oh, okay. All right, now let's go over to... Um, uh, let me uh, go, go, to, go ahead and go to Luke chapter 10. Let me ask you a question. The Bible here says G that they could not cast it out. Now, is that true? Yes. Turn your cell phone off, please, in church. Thank you. Good Lord. Um, where I even lost my train of thought. How many, how many here um, know that he said we couldn't cast it out? We couldn't cast it out. But yet, was that true? No, because in Luke chapter 10, let's go to Luke chapter 10, read verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. And then go down and read Luke 10, verses 17 through um, 20. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, wait a second. Jesus didn't even tell them to go cast out devils. They found out about it somehow and did it, right? Even the devils are subject to us. Keep reading. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, that's good enough. So here we see Jesus said, uh, I give you authority. Power. The word power, dunamis authority, over how many? How many? All. Did that include those ones there? Yeah. Huh? How many would agree with that? Shall we take a vote on it? Okay, so... All means all. Mm -hmm. So something going on here. Go to Luke chap or uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter ten, Melissa. Well, poor <laughs> Melissa, she's. A, oh. But we'll get there. We got a point, and it's and it's worth taking the time to get there. Okay, uh, Matthew ten one through eight. Hope I got it right. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, the names of these 12 apostles are these. Okay, let's okay. just stop right there. Or go down to verse 8 and read it. Excuse okay. me. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, yep. cast out devils. Okay, stop right there. All right, so it's apparent to us as we look at these scriptures, we have authority and power to do all these things. Amen. But why are things not getting done? You ever ask yourself that question? Yep. It's important. Everybody say this with me out loud. Well, we know... It was because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Yep. But then Jesus turns around and says something else. He says, this kind, of, uh, kind only go out with a prayer in the Christian F word. Yep. <laughs> fasting. Right. Let me ask you a question. I, I'll say it again. Does fasting change God? No. 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 Does fasting change the devil? No. 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 Who does fasting change? Uh, uh, fasting is for our reason. Fasting and prayer change us right. first before they change other things. Amen. Now let's go over here to, to James chapter 3. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. I, I've never seen this before. 
I've read these scriptures I don't know how many times. But man, you'll get something out of this here in a minute. This will really bless you. Uh, I hope it blesses you as much as it did me. Because spiritual things are very important not to be messed with. And when you see a principle, you better get it. And obey it. Or you're going you're gonna to have no results. Amen. Amen. Okay, James chapter 3, verse 16. Famous scripture. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. For where envying and strife is, there is what? Confusion. Confusion, and then what? Every evil work. How many? Every. Every evil work is there when we have envying, jealousy, strife. Huh. Now, let's look at something. Go back. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yep. How come, how come they couldn't cast it out? Everybody say unbelief. unbelief. Well, let's go over here to Luke chapter, uh, what, what was I? Luke, Luke chapter 9 again. I don't see, I have to read the whole thing through. <laughs> but I'll, I'll pick a little spot here for you. Nine. Yeah, let's go back here. Okay, what, what do we read before here? Luke chapter 9, 28. Okay, and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, like okay, we'll go over here. Verse 41, we'll start there with uh, what Jesus' right. response was. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. Keep reading. And as he went yet a and as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, every one at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Okay, hang on one second before we go the rest of the way. When when his disciples came back. The, in, in Luke chapter 10 and, and talk to Jesus about, you know, the, the devils. You notice they never said, Jesus, most of the devils, we, we, we cast out one, you know, all these devils have set one or two. Mm -hmm. They didn't say that. They were amazed mm -hmm. that they had authority right. over all of them. Okay, keep reading. Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. And they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. Then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should, should be greatest. Hang on greatest. for a second. Then there a what? Arose a reasoning among a them. A reasoning among who? The disciples. Okay, keep reading. Which of them should be greatest? All right. And Jesus, perceiving thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him. And said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name receives me, Whoever shall receive me, receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you, the same shall be great. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils. Let's just stop there. Okay. The point being here, they were in strife. Wow. The whole thing and the whole reason and meaning of those scriptures was that strife wow. is connected to unbelief. Everybody say strife, strife is connected to unbelief. Why? You can't have strife in your life and get activate the power of God to work. You can't come down here, you know. Uh, we're gonna we're casting out, you know. And, and we need to stop. We need to get watch out because you know all these people are being used by God, and it's wonderful to see you guys all be used by God. I think that's the greatest thing ever. I love it. Thankful for it, but big deal. It's all about what Jesus did. Never keep that in your little yeah. pea brains. Right. Understand it. The more God uses you, the more you under, should understand that. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, you got to keep that stuff out of your life. And between us, we can't afford that in this church. We can't afford a bunch of strife in our church. And, and you know, people coming down here and everybody's out of sorts with, in their marriage. And everybody's out of sorts with that and this and the other thing. And expect God to move in the greater things. 
He says, strife is connected to unbelief. Unbelief is connected to strife. Unforgiveness is connected to unbelief. Because that's strife, bitterness, resentments. All those things are connected to unbelief, which is the reason that we can't do any mighty works. Now, how do we cure that? Well, Jesus told them. He said, look. He said, this kind goes up not out, not but by what? Pray. Pray. In other words, you fast, you pray. Let me, let me paraphrase it for you. Get your spiritual life in order before you go casting out devils. Or praying for the sick. Or raising the dead. Or. You guys get that? Are you sure? We get to go home then. It's just service. That's the point. What a great point. Seriously, if you get that one point, how many know that, man, I'll tell you what, strife and all of that is really deadly. Okay, I want you to write this down. It's important for you to hear what Jesus is saying. Go get in your closet, make sure that there's nothing on the inside. That's why we take communion. We should do it that yep. at that time. Make sure there's nothing there between you and God or you and yourself. Yep. You can be in strife with yourself yep. you know, or, or somebody else, another person. So then when you clear up all that stuff, right, and, and you, you're all freed up on the inside, write this down. God's full power will work. Yeah, you won't be hindered to just some things. The more we understand this particular principle, the more power will flow out of us. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So it's important for you to, to take note of this. It is not you who does things, but it is you who positions yourself. It's like Aaron Rodgers. Now, what's the guy that uh, he always throws to? Oh, until, until now, the one the Raiders got him. So, anyway, Devontae Adams, right? So, those guys go out there on the field, and Aaron Rodgers will drop back a certain amount of steps. He can have a blindfold on, turn and throw the ball, and Devontae Adams would be there to catch it. In position. All Devante did was position himself. Amen? We must position ourselves to be used by God. Say that with me. Position myself to be used by God. Now, one of the greatest things about pray, prayer is not the answers to prayer uh, in the sense of, well, I prayed and God answered. That's great. But one of the greatest things about prayer that I know of is how God deals with us personally when we're spending time in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can make the necessary corrections. Amen. And man, it don't take much. I remember I was praying for a little girl and you want to sit down? You can sit down if you want. But you, you want to stand up? You can too. I'll take a seat. All right. Um, one time and I could not figure out why she couldn't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She couldn't get her prayer language. You know, and I was getting frustrated because that, that's one of my specialties. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I got like a word of knowledge about it, and uh, the Lord gave me a name. And I said, does so-and-so have anything to do with you? And she started crying. It's her sister. And I said, what's going on with you and your sister? Well, we're out of sorts. We've been out of sorts. I knew immediately, see, we've been out of sorts for many years. I said, let's pray for your sister and forgive her. Now, you don't have to really, you know, people say, oh, I can't forgive. It's hard. And blah, 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 all nonsense and cocky pock. It's not hard to forgive somebody from your heart. Heart. Your spirit, not your brain. So I just told her, we're going to forgive your sister from your heart, your spirit. Where God is, God, is, God can forgive easily. You know, I mean, he's your spirit, right? Does that make sense? So we prayed. She asked, uh, you know, forgiveness, for, you know, the Lord forgive her for that and 
forgave her sister. And the second she did that, she spoke in tongues, just ripped right off. Have you ever thought about, now be honest with me, how many here have ever had a thought about why? Raise your hands if you have. I have. Why that didn't work? Why this person didn't get healed? Why? Well, this is not to bear condemnation on anybody, but the answer is with us. Right. Yeah. Something we're doing, yeah. not with God. And Almighty God came in here and we, we obeyed every principle. Everybody would be instantly healed. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I remember Brother Hagin talking about this one time. He was in a series, a series of meetings. And he said he had this happen to him. I think it was twice. I, ho I hope I'm not misquoting this. And if I am, I, uh, forgive me. Uh, because I can't you know, remember everything about what, what he said. But uh, he's, he's up here. And he's ministering away. And he's just teaching like this. And he said the place was packed out. There was about 1,500 people there or so. And all of a sudden he started seeing this cloud come in well, that happens sometimes in his meetings that means the glory's there right all right and uh and all this remember the word riverside okay and so he said all of a sudden it was like a giant light bulb went off how many know when the light bulb goes off in your eyes, you can't see for a minute? He says, that's what it was like. There's this gigantic flash in the building. And every sinner was at the altar. That's awesome. They didn't walk to the altar. They were translated up there. And every sick person was instantly healed. And anybody that needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, these people witness this. Yeah. Another time that happened. Now, what's wrong with us? Well, I'll tell you what, what a lot of it is. I went to a service in Riverside, California area, or it was around there. And in this particular service, it happened to be, you guys get anything out of this? It happened to be a preacher meeting. Everybody write down preacher meeting. And then put behind it, buffoonery and foolishness. Preacher meetings can be some of the most difficult and challenging meetings to preach at because everybody thinks they know everything. You know, oh, I know more than you do. It's, it's like the disciples, you know, who's the greatest, you know, same thing. Well, anyway, so I get in this meeting and I notice that there was white people and black people and Hispanic people and Filipino people and I mean, you had almost every nation known to mankind in that thing. I'm not kidding either. You even had some, you know, first natives. All, just all mixed crowd. It was great. I love that. But I don't, and I felt a cloud, but it wasn't the glory. Because there can be a cloud of strife, just like there can be a cloud of glory. And I said to the Lord, Lord, what about this? I, I'm, I don't like not having any results. And I can just you know, tw twiddle my f fingers and toes and you know, might as well just do that and sing a little song or something because nothing's going to happen in this room. And he said, he, all of a sudden he dropped in my, a message in my spirit real quick. So I got up and I preached on and ministered on this strife, bitterness, resentment. Racism, yeah, there you go. all that kind of stuff. I said, you have absolutely no right to call yourself a black church. That went over real big. And the people that brought me in the meeting were looking at me like, go, brother, go. I said, you have no right to consider yourself a white church. What is that kind of mess? A Hispanic church. Lies. To God, there is no such thing as a black man or a red man. Yeah, that's right. We're all the same. Yeah. And then I said this. I said, a lot of you guys won't even let women preach because they're women, you bunch of hypocrites. Uh -huh. I said just like that. Yeah. I was having fun. You could have you had, I'm telling you, some of the looks I got, 
You could have, I would have thought maybe they had a gun available. <laughs> so I just started letting them have it like that. I kept doing it, kept doing it. And I said, you're not going to have anything happen in your life or your ministry until you get all this junk out. I said, if you need to repent, get up here and repent. And they all got up, came down. They all repented, and I left the building as quickly as possible. <laughs> as I'm going out the building as quickly as possible, the pastor came over and said, wait, because I was scheduled to go home. Okay. You got to stay for another day. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you, got, you need to stay. That, that's the message they needed to hear, brother. You need to stay. Very few people would ever even preach that. I said, well, I don't know them. Got one shot. I'm leaving. At the time, I was a really good fast runner, you know. I feared no man. I could bench press four and ten pounds. You know. Stupid, but anyway. So they said, can you come tomorrow? I said, sure. So the next day, I got up. Now, Stella's my witness. Pastor Stella over here is my witness. She's with me. Every place is packed out. This was a Tuesday evening. Is that correct? Tuesday night at... Uh, they turned the service over to me about 8 o'clock after all of the riveting praise and worship. So I get up there and I start speaking on what I was going to speak on and the glory was so strong that I spoke maybe 10 minutes and then I went up, Stella and I, on the platform, sat down and watch the Holy Ghost minister to people until 2 o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. Wow. We didn't say anything. We didn't do anything. They were sprawled out, looked like a bomb hit. They're laughing, they're crying, they're repenting. This thing's happening. People are getting healed all over the place. We sat up there. I wish I would have had some popcorn, but that probably would have destroyed the anointing. <laughs> it, was a, it was a show. It was a Holy Ghost show. Very rarely have I ever seen the power of God like that. Wow. I didn't have to do anything. Of course, you know, I can't do anything anyway. Right. But you get the point? Yeah. Yes. You know why? Because those guys had genuinely got the, the bitterness and resentment and racism and everything out of their heart. Yes. And that, but that means they got the unbelief out. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. See how they're connected? That is a true story, and that is the truth. Stand to your feet. If there be anybody in here, you need Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Today is the day for your salvation. If you're backslidden, you need to get right with God. If you're out there in Internet land, today is the day to get saved. If you need healing in your body or deliverance, I, I, I expect today God will just have you make some adjustments. Ask him to touch you and minister to you, and he will. Amen. If you're in here today and you need to get that right, yeah. right. get something right with somebody. Yeah. Do it today. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Amen? No. It's important because you never know. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. And so today is the day we have to deal with. So... If you got unforgiveness or bitterness or resentment or whatever against anybody, or if you're out of sorts with your, with your wife or your spouse, I even extend great forgiveness towards Stella for keeping her phone on once. Yes, yeah, she'll learn a lesson from that. She won't do that anymore because that's embarrassing to her. She didn't even know it was on probably. Mine's always on vibrate. If you're going to have your phone on in here and you're going to uh, look at your phone, put it on vibrate. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let me say it again. If you're in here and you've got your phone on, put it on vibrate, right? Yeah. What's wrong with you guys? You, a lot of unbelief in here, a lot of strife. So what are we going to do before we come to church? Two things. Yeah, good. Two things. We're going to stop talking. <laughs> Write this down. Yes, we'll do that. But this is important. Number one, pray. Yeah. Stop talking about cupcakes yeah. or anything else. Pray. No, no fellowshipping around other things in the, before service. 
Listen, I'm trying to help you. Secondarily, before you come in the sanctuary, make sure you get yourself right in this area. If you have anything you need to talk to somebody about, do it before. Come on, everybody. Then we come in here and we'll see more results. I'm not mad at you. By the way, happy Father's Day. That was my Father's Day message. My traditional Father's Day's message. So how many are going to treat your father to a steak? You well, can always try. All right. Are you guys done? How many here want to go home? There's cake for Jim's birthday in the back. Is it they have keto friendly cake? 